you doing this Sunday? We're doing okay? All right. <laughs> we are so happy and so glad that you are with us this Sunday. I want to invite you to stand up. Let's go ahead and stand and let's, uh, let's worship God with everything we have this morning. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. And I've still got joy. I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense, so I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength, cause I build my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful in So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. Sing that again. He won't. He won't. He won't. My firm foundation, Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down. Faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. Sing it. He won't. He won't. He won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't. The rain came when blue, my house was built on. on you I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it sing it again rain came rain came when blue but my house was built on you I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it cause I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it through Cause I'm standing strong on you I'm gonna make it through Cause my house is built on you Christ is my firm foundation 
the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So I Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Oh, how's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Okay. <clears throat> everybody enjoying the heat? No. no. Okay. Um, I, I heard a pastor say one time that um, that uh, Earth is the only hell that Christians will ever know, and Texas summers really test that. <laughs> so. Um, so let's 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 do announcements. Uh, next Sunday night, from six to eight, there will be a prayer walk that will take place uh, at our our public schools. And so uh, please, if you can, uh, make a trip uh, up there and pray throughout the hallways of our schools. Uh, I've been asked that we we pray for Brother Jason. He is on a bike trip somewhere at the moment. Uh, and to pray for his his safety as he as he travels. Um, and on a sad note, as many of y'all know, um, this this last week, uh, Clossy, who has been faithful member and servant here at the church, uh, went home to be with the Lord. And so we will be having uh, his services this uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. And there will also be a viewing <clears throat> Friday night at, at Grosbeck Funeral Home. Um, and please be in prayer for his family, RL and Patty, they're, they're, they're taking it rough, so please be in prayer uh, for them during this time. Is there any more announcements, anything that we need to make mention of this morning? We are fortunate to have Jonathan and Kathleen back with us to lead uh, worship this morning. Last week we voted in Mike Goodrich as our worship pastor. He will officially start... Um, next week, and Jonathan and Kathleen were gracious enough to drive down from Dallas this morning and lead us in worship. So we're very grateful to have them here this morning. Um, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day, Lord. We thank you for all the ways that you love and bless us today. Father, we pray uh, for this morning, Lord. Uh, Father, we pray for the service, Lord, that that you would speak, Lord, that you would be powerful and present in this place today. Lord, we need you so much, Lord. We need to experience you. We need to hear from you. Uh, God, I pray uh, for Brother Jason as he travels, Lord, that you would keep him safe. Father, I thank you for the, the life that, that Clossy lived, Lord, and the, the attitude that he exhibited throughout his life. And Father, we thank you that he is at home in your presence today. Uh, Father, we continue to pray for that family. And God, we just lift you high this morning, Lord. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand with us as we worship. Oh, my words fall short. I've got nothing new. 
could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must stay. Praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king except for heart singing. One response. I've got one response. I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. So Verse 5, it says, You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for your mercies that are new. Every single morning, we thank you. And we have a house to dwell in forever that we don't deserve it, but you paid the ultimate price. We praise you for that, and you're so good to us. In Jesus' name. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. 
from the moment that I wake up And when I lay in my head Oh, I will see of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful so so good with every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have felt in the goodness of god because all my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God Come on, sing it again Give Him thanks Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Sing your goodness. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am made I will see of the goodness of God sing cause all my life again cause all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am made I will see of the goodness of God I will see of the goodness of God then sings my soul
Good morning. If you would, take your Bibles and open them up to 1 John chapter 4. We'll begin in verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. We have come to know and believe the love which God had for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love him because he first loved us. Bow with me in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, this morning nothing will be accomplished here apart from your spirit. We ask that you would be present with us, that you would make the word real and relevant to each one of us. Give us a glimpse into your amazing love for us that we might honor and glorify you and live a life in subjection to you. We ask now, Lord, that you guide and direct us and that all things that we say and do will renown to your honor and glory. And it's in the name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. This past week, I spent a little time well, good morning, Jody. <laughs> it's good to see you. I spent a little time going through my reading the scriptures. Brandon had done an excellent job last week of expounding on the scriptures through verse 12 of chapter 4, and I picked up on verse 13. But as I thought about that, and I made a trip to the back porch with my coffee, and I sat there and just kind of took it all in, God's nature and all the things that he's created. And I don't know if y'all have ever experienced this. I'm sure you have at some time. But there's momentary clarity that God gives us insight into his truth and his reality. Amen. The first time it ever happened to me was uh, the church was singing, When We've Been There 10,000 Years. And for a brief moment in time, God gave me a, a look into eternity. It was an amazing thing. But as I sat there and I studied the birds and the creation that is from my back porch and the little birds flying around, I was contemplating on the, the magnitude of God's creation. It goes beyond anything we can comprehend. It's an amazing, amazing thing. And as I thought about it, I watched a little bird flutter from limb to limb, and he was doing his morning business, taking care of what God called him to do. And I thought about how we value things of God so cheaply sometimes that the Scripture says in Luke chapters 12, verse 6, Jesus said, Are not five sparrows sold for two cents, yet not one of them is forgotten before God? Five cents for, I mean, two cents for five sparrows. That's not putting much value on them, is it? But God says not one of them is forgotten. That little sparrow that you 
target practice with your first BB gun on is not forgotten by God. That sparrow that your cat had yesterday is not forgotten by God. He knows each one that falls to the ground. He knows each one that passes through this life. Just as the solar system has been designed by God and he's, God has specified a flight pan for all the stars in heaven and he calls them by name. I just thought about the scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. God cherishes this world. He cherishes not only you and I, but he cherishes all creation. And one day he's going to redeem creation with a new heaven and a new earth. As I mentioned, Brandon had preached last week on the love of God from verses 1 through 12. And he did a magnificent job of expounding on it, but I don't understand the difference between a movie trailer and a movie preview. <laughs> I just don't comprehend that difference. We, Mike Loftus and I carried that sermon into the jail last week and we used it at four different groups, brought that sermon, the same sermon to them and it, it carried well even there, didn't it, Mike? He did a great job. John, in writing this letter, repeatedly makes references to the evidences that are indicated in our relationship with the Lord. He gives us proofs things we can look for in our life that indicate that we're saved and we're part of the family of God. But more than that, he keeps returning to the idea of love. The love of God, the love for God, the love for one another. 31 times the, the word love is used in his writing of this short little letter. Four times in the past tense, so 35 times he refers to God's love being present in our life and how we need we need to pay attention to the love. So I just want to go verse by verse and try to expound on what he says in verses 13 through 19. Verse 13, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. It's close to the King James, but not exactly the same. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he's given us his spirit. How do we know we're in him? Because he's given us his spirit. How do we know he, we have his spirit? We can't see it. We can't witness it. We can't make sure it's there. And many times, folks, we're moved by spirits, but it's not the right spirit. How do we know that we're moved by his spirit? Well, if you'll keep reading, it kind of gives it clarity in verses 14 and 15. But there's not a tangible method of knowing that I possess the Spirit. I don't know how to test for that. You might say you've got to speak in tongues or a different language. In fact, Jesus said in John chapter 3, the Spirit is like the wind. It blows. You see the effects of it, but you don't know where it came from. You don't know where it's going. You can't tell where it's coming from. He's given us his spirit. In verse 14, he says, We have beheld and bear witness that the Father has sent the Son into the world to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So the evidence that you've got the spirit is to be able to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and to believe in him is the evidence of your spirit. Look back with me at verse 2 of this same chapter. He, he says, test the spirits. And folks, we need to test the spirits. I don't know how many times I've witnessed in my own life somebody saying, God has led me to do this or God has led me to do that. And then come find out it wasn't God at all that was leading them. By this you know, verse 2 says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. The fact that you can believe the gospel message, testify to the gospel message, confess the gospel message, is evidence that God's Spirit is, evident, is with you. In verse 16, 
he says, For we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. It's somewhat, when you think about it in John's writing here, it's somewhat like a, a big math problem. You've seen them drawn on bills and chalkboards before. It's extreme math problem. It takes a lot of steps and a lot of different theories to work them out. It's almost like John is writing out his theory about God's love on the blackboard, and he's coming to a place where he can make a conclusion, a summation. And I want you to, to read with me again verse 16. We've come to know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God. God abides in him. That first statement I want to read again. We have come to know and to believe the love which God has for us. When we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, when we accept him as our personal Savior, we are given a love, and we're given a knowledge of a love that surpasses every other thing in, in this life. The one who abides in God abides in love. Do you know today the love which God has for you? How do I know that I'm a Christian? Because God gave me his spirit, and he take, only takes up residence in those that are his. How do I know that he gave me his spirit? Because I believe the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, and I confess that Jesus is the Son of God. In other words, I believe the gospel. Not only do I believe the gospel, but I have come to know and to believe that all of this is because of the love which God has for us. I have come to understand the eternal love of God, for God is love. That's why... He, the Father, sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. It's all out of His love. God didn't need to plan us. Didn't need a plan of salvation for His own need of honor. He didn't need to build up His ego by needing someone to worship Him. He didn't need to be glorified to help build up His ego. He was moved and motivated by love for you and I in all the things that He did. The conclusion of the summation of John's formula is you're going to know that you abide in God and God abides in you because you abide in love. You love God, you love Jesus, you love your brothers and sisters in Christ, and that love even spills over to where you, like God, love your enemies. By this, by this kind of love is perfected with us. Verse 17, read it with me. By this love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. By this love is perfected in us. This love that originates with God is perfected with us. That is, love accomplishes its greatest work when we can stand before our Creator in the radiance of his glory and the awesome light of his holiness and stand there confidently Stand there, having been transformed into the image of Jesus, having been changed and equipped by and with the love of God. Folks, we are being transformed and changed even today, even now. People's lives are being changed by, your, by the love of God. It says in the last part of that verse, as he is, so also are we in this world. As he is, how is Jesus Christ? He is pure. He is holy. He is loving. So were we made to be by the love of God. We are changed to be pure, holy, and loving because of God's love in our life. That ought to make you say amen. Yes. Glory! <laughs> Wake up. There is no fear in love, verse 18. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment and the one who fears is not perfected in love. The individual who truly feels that they love the Lord with all their heart has no room for dread or fear. So far, so for us to fear God's judgment is an indicator that perfect love has not been attained in our life. 
There are still sacrifices that you need to make. There are ill feelings that need to be corrected. Other things that perhaps in your life are inconsistent with God's will for your life. There may be habits or something else you need to deal with, but God's perfect love has not been attained if you fear standing before him. God's love has not been perfected in you as of yet. Verse number 19, we love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Now, in the King James, it says we love him. In the newer, later, the older transcripts, the original transcripts that they can find, it, the him is not in there. It says we love because he first loved us. The ability to love is given to us by God's amazing love for us. We love him because he first loved us. I want to ask you a question this morning, maybe a series of questions, but why are you here? Why are you here? Some of you have gone to great lengths to be here. You got up earlier than you normally get up. You got dressed, got cleaned up, combed your hair, and perhaps shaved, came to church. Why? Some of you went to even greater lengths. You not only got yourself ready, but you got two or three little urchins ready, <laughs> urchins, to bring to church with you. You've done a lot of sacrifice to be here. Why do you bring your tithes and your offerings here? on Sunday morning? Why do you gather here to sing, to pray? Why do you waste your time when you could be at home doing something perhaps you feel would be more important? You could be washing your, cleaning up your car, vacuuming out your automobile, fishing, playing with the family at the lake, but you're here. Why do you come? that little word that John implements in the center of that scripture because because he first loved us the things you do you love God for whatever reason some of you may be doing it out of a sense of duty a sense of responsibility some of you have prepared lessons and tried to make it interesting for children so that you could share with them the truth of God's word some of you have labored to try to find an interesting way to present the scriptures to your class so that nobody nods off on you. Went to a lot of trouble to be here, to be a part of it. And some of you go through all that trouble and suffer criticism and, and critical spirits. Why do you do it? Because of the love of God and because he has first loved us. You and I are here today for a lot of things, a lot of reasons, but for the main reason that we love God. John is an old man at this point in his ministry. He is suffering great things. He's been put in prison several times. He's been beaten for his love and his obedience to Jesus. And I do not know at the time of the writing of this letter if he had been put in the vat of oil, but John, because of his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, was put in a boiling pot of oil in order to destroy him, and God provided for him, and he was not killed by that oil. But he suffered greatly for the cause of Christ. And in spite of all this, writing, He's an old man. He's probably not over his suffering yet because his service is not over. But he's confident that there are others that, with his love and passion for Jesus, he says, we love. We love. When I think about that old man and think about what he sacrificed and what he gave up in order that he might serve the Christ that he loved, and I think about us, how we suffer so little 
if the air conditioner doesn't come on, we don't want to have church. We don't want to be uncomfortable in the least in our service to the Lord. But John thought enough of us. He thought there was enough people that had his same passion, his same love, his same desire to serve the Lord that he put them in the same group. And he said, we love because he first loved us. Do we love like we ought to be loving? Because he first loved us. He loved you first. He loved me first. When did his love begin for me? Probably like Jeremiah said, and from my mother's womb, God loved each one of us from the very beginning. He's called us for a particular purpose, and he's placed his call upon us. He loved us first. Did he love me when I was drinking and carousing around? Yes. Did he love me when I didn't know who he was and didn't believe in him? Yes. Did he know you? Did he love you before you came to submit to his will and his call in your life? Yes. God's love for you is real. And if you don't understand anything else this morning, if you don't get anything out of this message, there may be nobody that's spoken to you today. There may be nobody that's told you good morning, glad you're here. You may not feel welcomed. You may be feeling separated and alone. But I want you to know this. God loves you. God loves you. And I pray that you'll feel the love of God in this presence of this church and this body will share the love of God because God has chose to love us. But he loved us first. He loved us greatest. We need to love one another. And may you and I grasp the scope and the magnitude of God's love. As I mentioned, 34 or 35 times John mentions love in this short little letter. He saw how it was all connected. Everything came from God's love. Folks, I want you to understand it's all about the love of God. All about the love of God. Jesus Christ is going to be exalted because of God's love for you and I. We're going to exalt him and raise him up as king of kings. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you love one another. May we use and do what God's called us to do. May we love each other without reservation. Love your enemies. Love those that despitefully use you. That's tough to do, but Corey Ten Boom shared a story, one of her writings about as she was attending a church in Germany she was giving her testimony and there was one of the men that had been a guard that was had been a guard at the shower where she was forced to strip down and take a shower with the other women and he had had no respect for her at that time but after the service that day she gave her testimony he came up to her and said Fraulein I'm so pleased to hear what you've had to share that there's forgiveness for the things that we've done in the past. And he stuck out his hand to shake her hand. And she said she could not raise her hand. But she said she, in her mind, she witnessed, remembered the pile of clothes and how they'd laughed and mocked and made fun of the women. And saw her sister, Betsy, in that same vision as she died because of starvation. She said she just couldn't shake his hand. And then she quietly asked the Lord Jesus, said, give me your forgiveness. And said at that moment she was able to lift her hand and take his. I want you to understand the love of God goes beyond anything we can imagine. We can forgive the most horrible crimes, the most 
debauchery people. Folks, and we live in a world today where they need to see and witness the love of God. As Brandon said last week, the love of God needs to be on display in our lives so that people are drawn to us. And I share with you what I shared in the jail last week. When I first came to Groves back years ago, there was a driller that lived here in Thornton, Texas. His name was Jack Maldon. Jack Maldon drillers tear up a lot of stuff so they need machine shops. So he came by the machine shop and we got, became good friends. He loved to talk about the Lord. And as he gave his testimony, he shared with me that Luke Reasoner had, had been an insurance salesman in Grosbeck for many years, had an excellent testimony. He was a very loving guy. God's spirit just flowed out of him. Jack Maldon said he got down on his knees one night and he said this, God, I don't know what Luke's got, but whatever he's got, I want. That's the way our life ought to be. We ought to be reflecting the love of God so much that people desire the light and the love of God that's in your life. We ought to be that kind of example. If you're not living the kind of life, if you're not experiencing the love of God in your life, I want to ask you, why not? We all have tendency sometimes to be very critical and very cynical of other people. Find, look at their faults and condemn them. But folks, you don't have any place to condemn anybody for we're all on level ground at the foot of the cross. We're all sinners before God. We need to be thankful for his abounding love towards us. We need to walk in his love and we need to express his love to the world around us. Stand with me as we have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for the opportunity we have to study your word today. Lord, I pray that we will walk in your love, that we will understand your love. We love because you first loved us. May we be carriers of the love of your, that you've displaced in our life. Lord, I pray right now for every soul that is here that they'll have a pulling and a tugging on their own. Sorry, Lord. Pulling and tugging on our heart. We ask that you would draw us near to you. That we may show the love of God to the world around us. We ask now that you forgive us for we sin. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Jesus loves me, yes I know, the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. We're going to sing a song of invitation now. and.